We see it every season. One team manages to stay perfect, sometimes until the waning weeks of the year. The perfect Pats, Cam's Panthers, Peyton, and the Colts. There have been some legendary teams, but an unblemished record hardly guarantees a Super Bowl victory. That's why we're asking the question, what happened to every remaining undefeated team since 2000? Let's begin in Minnesota. Culpepper. There you go. His third rushing touchdown. In his first year as a starter, Dante Culpepper had no trouble filling the shoes of previous starters Randall Cunningham and Jeff George, using those feet to score three rushing touchdowns in week one. That set the tone for the offense as Minnesota started a league best 7-0 behind their dynamic pass-catching duo of Chris Carter and Randy Moss. Moss notched three scores in a week five win in Detroit, and two weeks later, veteran Robert Smith exploded for 170. 70 yards against the Bears. Robert Smith into the clear at the 40, at the 45, turns the corner. 50, 45, 40, far sideline, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Robert Smith. Smith delivered a career year in 2000, putting together five straight 100-yard games in the second half of the year. But the Vikings didn't follow suit. Minnesota was trounced by the Tampa defense in Week 9. The Bucks owned the line of scrimmage, stuffing the run and disrupting Culpepper. They forced three turnovers, including a pick six. After their 7-0 start, the Vikes limped into the postseason, losing four of their final seven games. They would right the ship in the divisional round before absolutely disintegrating in the NFC Championship, getting blanked 41-0 against the Giants. The Giants are jubilant. They have shut out the Vikings, which has been a tough day all the way around. The 2001 Rams became the second team ever to start 6-0 in three straight seasons. This time, they were the lone undefeated squad as the greatest show on turf again toyed with opposing defenses. They squeaked out an overtime win on opening day and snuck past the 49ers a game later. In week three, the offensive fireworks began. And Warner looking for Falk, chased, grabbed, They blanked the Lions 35-0 after that, and a couple weeks later, seemed poised to pick up their seventh straight win at home. In Week 7, St. Louis was up 18 before the Saints erupted for 28 second-half points. Thanks to a stunning eight turnovers and some terrible defensive execution, New Orleans completed the comeback with a game-winning kick in the waning seconds. But the Rams were undeterred. They finished the season with a league-best 14-2 record, led by another MVP season from Kurt Warner and an Offensive Player of the Year effort from Marshall Falk. They dismantled the Packers and snuck past Philly in the playoffs before reaching another Super Bowl, their second in three years. The Rams were heavy favorites to take home another title, but we know what happened instead. Here comes one of greater importance if he makes it, and it's right down the pipe. It's good! It's good! And the Patriots are Super Bowl champions! The Chargers looked rejuvenated in 2002 with new head coach Marty Schottenheimer. Their dynamic duo of Drew Brees and LaDainian Tomlinson led the way, but the offense couldn't maintain its momentum while the defense continued to give up points in bunches. Both sides of the ball finished in the NFL's bottom half in scoring as San Diego missed the playoffs, going just 8-8. Eight and eight. The Raiders were back with a vengeance in 2002. Led by Rich Gannon, Charlie Garner, and Jerry Rice, Oakland raced to four straight wins, scoring over 40 points per game during that span. Inside the 31. Good block by Sims, time for Gannon, right down the middle, it's caught by Garner, it's a foot race, and he's in for the touchdown. They'd follow up those four wins with four straight losses, but still finished 11-5 behind an MVP season from Gannon. They made quick work of the AFC to play for their first title in nearly two decades, but they ran into an absolute buzzsaw in Super Bowl 37. Did you know the Chiefs started 9-0 in 2003? If you're thinking, oh, that's probably because of Priest Holmes, you would be correct. So opportunistic. Holmes reverses his field. Trent Green threw a great block. Touched it. 
What a block by Trent Green. Are you kidding? On London Fletcher. The stud rusher amassed a season's worth of stats, over a thousand yards and a preposterous 14 touchdowns through the team's first nine games. He'd finish the season with a then record 27 rushing scores. But in week 11, Holmes and the Chiefs would fall back down to earth. Two long second half touchdowns put the Bengals ahead for good. KC was held to 67 rushing yards and converted just a single third down in the loss. Still, this wasn't a one-man show. Trent Green delivered a Pro Bowl season, while future Hall of Famer Tony Gonzalez hauled in 10 scores and earned an All-Pro nod. And if the offense wasn't enough, they also had this guy. Dante Hall backing up to the 8-yard line. Dancing. Middlebrooks can't get him. Uh oh, now he's back inside the five that finds a seam. He's gone. He's got the kicker to beat, and that's Noor. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching something that has never happened before in the National Football League. Dick Vermeil's squad finished the season 13-3 and, and looked like a force heading into the postseason. And while the offense showed up in the divisional round, their shoddy defense had no answer for Peyton Manning and the Colts. One of history's most exciting rosters flopped in their first playoff bout. After multiple strong seasons behind Donovan McNabb and head coach Andy Reid, the Eagles added Terrell Owens in 2004 to finally get over the hump. Early returns were promising. Here is a bootleg and wide open in the end zone. Touchdown, Terrell Owens. And that's three for T.O. in the opening game. What more could the Eagle fans ask? Fueled by the All-Pro receiver, Philly soared to a league-best 7-0 mark, racking up five easy wins before eking out an overtime victory in Cleveland. The defense allowed just under 15 points during this league-best start, as new additions Javon Curse and Jeremiah Trotter bolstered the front seven. But the offense stalled out against the Red Hot Steelers. They fell 27-3 for their first loss of the season. Philly responded with six straight wins as all pro seasons from Lito Shepard and Brian Dawkins helped the Eagles finish with the second-ranked scoring defense. Ramsey just throws it up for Grants and Dawkins intercepts. This balanced attack took care of the Vikings and Falcons for the NFC crown, but those pesky pats were waiting in the wings and the Eagles ran out of lift. The Colts and the newly minted passing touchdown king came into 2005 with a vengeance, but did anyone really expect Indy to rattle off 13 straight wins to start the season? Peyton looks for the quick throw, lobs it in the corner to Marvin, touchdown! That's the record breaker, the 86 touchdown pass from Man the three-headed monster of Manning, Edron James, and Marvin Harrison overwhelmed opponents. That's nothing new, but it was the surprisingly stout defense that gave the Colts their kick. They allowed fewer than six points per game over the first five contests. In week nine, they dismantled the reigning champs 40 to 21 on the road. As the sheriff posted 30 burgers with ease, it seemed like they may never lose, but they did in week 15 as the Chargers flustered Manning all day. Four sacks, three takeaways, and a game ceiling touchdown run was enough to hand the Colts their first loss of the year. Still, Tony Dungy's squad finished the season 14-2 with the second-best scoring numbers on both sides of the ball. That made their divisional round loss to the eventual champion Steelers even more shocking. Must kick this 46-yard field goal to top. And it's no good! He missed it. Not even close. Wide right. But they'd be back in 2006. Like clockwork, Indy would again be the last undefeated team ticking. Despite losing edge and some key defensive pieces, the Colts galloped to another blistering start. This time, it was a little more dramatic. Seven of their first nine wins came in one-score games. Tom Brady's playing like Peyton Manning. Over the middle, tipped and then intercepted. And Peyton Manning and company can run out the clock and go to the halfway pole 
undefeated. The Colts started 9-0 before the offense sputtered in Dallas. They went up 14-7 midway through the third, but saw the ball just twice after that as the Cowboys took the lead. Manning completed just 51% of his passes and threw two picks. But this would finally be the year of the undefeated. Behind an all-pro season from Harrison and Pro Bowl years from Manning and Reggie Wayne, the Colts' offense carried the load all the way to the promised land. After finally topping Belichick and the Pats, Indy secured their second Lombardi trophy in franchise history. The Colts are world champions! And now we've come to the mother of all undefeated teams, the 2007 Pats. The only 16-0 team in regular season history, New England toyed with its opposition in unprecedented fashion. Brady going for Randy Moss in the end zone. This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. And again, Tom Brady and Randy Moss are just playing jump ball. The combo of Brady and Moss seemed like an NFL game breaker as the offense dumped touchdown after touchdown on helpless secondaries. Yeah, they had their scares, week 9 against the Colts, week 13 in Baltimore. Down here, bottom of the screen. Five options for Brady, the pump, the throw, it is caught for the touchdown by Gaffney! And New England leads! The Pats' offense scored nearly 600 points. Brady was named league MVP and finished with a then-record 50 passing touchdowns, 23 of them to Moss, a record in itself. But in the postseason, we got glimpses of their mortality. The Chargers pressured Brady and forced him into three interceptions. And with their weakness on display, the Giants pounced in Super Bowl 42. Constant pressure from the Giants' front four and a truly legendary game from Eli Manning was enough for David to knock off Goliath. Instead of ending at 19-0 with a Super Bowl championship, ends at 18-1. Now we're in 2008. Do you remember which team started 10-0 that year? If you guessed Kerry Collins and the Tennessee Titans, we're impressed. Garrard steps. Garrard in trouble. Garrard sacked. And it's over. The tone was set in week one. Tennessee, led by All-Pro Albert Hainsworth, registered seven sacks, while fellow All-Pro Cortland Finnegan snared two interceptions. Then there was the scintillating rookie Chris Johnson. Alongside the bruising Lendale White, this duo of thunder and lightning rounded out a versatile squad. In week seven, they made their presence felt. Here he is again. Watch out! See you later! Despite losing starter Vince Young in the opening week, the veteran presence of Kerry Collins was the perfect fit for this opportunistic bunch. Jeff Fisher's squad snuck past Green Bay in overtime, and before you could blink, the AFC South was home to the only undefeated team in football. But the Titans met their match against the bruising Jets defense, suffering their first loss in Week 12. Their lauded rushing tandem managed just 45 yards as Tennessee didn't even reach the end zone until the fourth quarter. The Titans finished the season a league best 13-3, but again, couldn't handle elite defensive pressure, falling to Baltimore in the divisional round. Manning steps up in the pocket, feeling the pressure, and then throws wow. it. It's a one-handed grab and a touchdown for Reggie Wayne. Another year, another white-hot start for the Colts. After two narrow victories to start the year, they found a familiar groove, and the wins started piling up. Even without Marvin Harrison, the offense was as explosive as ever, putting up at least 30 points on seven separate occasions. Manning was MVP yet again, while Dallas Clark and Dwight Freeney earned all-pro seasons. In Week 10, Indy snuck by the rival Pats with a crucial fourth down stop and a game-winning score. Now you need to pick it up. Manning looks for the quick throw, throws to Reggie, touchdown! Oh! Reggie Wayne! Well, yes, yes, yes! The Colts win! Before you knew it, the Colts were 14-0 and looked to be the second team in three years to secure a perfect season. Instead, new coach Jim Caldwell opted to rest his starters for the final two games as the squad finished 14-2. Caldwell yanked Manning and the rest of the starters in the third quarter against the Jets in Week 16. The Mean Green made quick work of backup Curtis Painter and rattled off 19 straight points for the comeback win. 
Did that decision impact their chances at a Super Bowl title? We'll never know, but in Super Bowl 44, two massive plays by the Saints certainly did. Onside kick to start the second half, and the ball bounces off the hands of the Colt. And the Saints football, they recover the onside kick. Pick off, look out. This pass Manning, and it's Tracy Porter talking it all the way. Nobody pulled away from the pack in 2010, but we did get a few 3-0 teams to bear behind a bruising defense led by Brian Erlacher, Lance Briggs, and Julius Peppers. Jay Cutler on the offense did just enough, while Devin Hester continued to electrify on special teams. Took Hester back to the 39. Picked up a block, and here comes Hester! He might go! Devin Hester! Got it! Touchdown, Chicago! Chicago finished at 11-5 before eventually falling to the Packers in the NFC title game. Pittsburgh continued their dominance behind Big Ben and signature defensive prowess. The Black and Yellow won their first three tilts and continued to ride the all-pro duo of James Harrison and defensive player of the year Troy Polamalu. Polamalu picks it off! 30, 20, 10, touchdown! The Steelers and their top-ranked scoring defense finished 12-4 before falling to the Packers in Super Bowl 45. After finishing just 4-12 in 2009, the Chiefs won their first three games behind a breakout year from All-Pro speedster Jamal Charles. KC earned a wildcard berth before getting stomped by the Ravens in the postseason. The defending Super Bowl champs weren't done winning in 2011. Green Bay's offense was one of the best ever, scoring at least 30 points in nine of their 13 straight wins to start the season. The Packers had a prolific receiving core as five different pass catchers catchers amassed at least six scores. Then there was Aaron Rodgers, league MVP. All kinds of room for Rodgers to throw, and it's caught for a touchdown by Jordy Nelson. In week four, Rodgers amassed six total scores, while All-Pro Charles Woodson snagged a pick six. But their streak of 19 straight wins, dating back to 2010, was snapped by a mediocre Chiefs squad in week 15. Rodgers completed less than half of his passes and was sacked four times as the offense collapsed. Green Bay won their final two games, becoming just the fifth 15-1 team in league history. But that achievement would quickly be forgotten. The pass were stunned by the Giants in the divisional round. It's not the Packer team we have seen all season. Nope. And Aaron Rodgers got outplayed by Eli Manning. What a run for this Packers franchise coming to an end here tonight. Atlanta got off to their best start in franchise history, winning eight straight games in 2012. Matt Ryan completed a league best 68.6% .6 of his passes as the Falcons boasted a killer squad of pass catchers. Julio Jones broke out with over 1,000 receiving yards and 10 scores, while Roddy White racked up over 1,300 yards. Meanwhile, Tony Gonzalez was an all-pro with eight scores of his own, but their winning streak was on the ropes in week four. Luckily, the other Matt came to the rescue. Falcons trying to pull it out and stay undefeated, and Bryant's kick is good! The Falcons also boasted the fifth-ranked scoring defense, but it couldn't slow down Drew Brees in Week 10. The Hall of Famer tossed three touchdowns alongside a balanced rushing attack as Atlanta suffered their first loss of the season in New Orleans. Still, Mike Smith's team finished an NFC best 13-3, riding Bryant's leg to another last-second win in the divisional round. But they'd finally fall to the 49ers in the NFC Championship. The Falcons were up 10 at half before a stingy 49ers defense forced two costly second-half turnovers that ended Atlanta's season. Bryant. The Chiefs made a miraculous turnaround in 2013, following up a 2-14 season with a dominant start. For the second time in 10 years, Kansas City raced out to a 9-0 record, again finding themselves as the league's last unbeaten team. Led by first-year coach Andy Reid and the addition of Alex Smith, the Chiefs flourished. KC thrived on excellent special teams and boasted a top-six scoring offense and defense. All pros Eric Berry and Jamal Charles paved the way. 
Charles, end zone touchdown. An easy pitch and catch for the Kansas City Chiefs that are frankly making everything look easy this season. It is all Kansas City. But after their week 10 bye, the cracks started to show. Peyton Manning made short work of their secondary, throwing for 323 yards. The defense collapsed against the Chargers just a week later. The Chiefs won just two of their final seven games, finishing 11 and five. In their wild card matchup against the Colts, the wheels came off. KC built up a 28 point lead on the road by the third quarter, but they went on to surrender 35 second half points and another gut wrenching collapse. Steps up, long look and he's got Hilton for the touchdown. Indy pulled off the second largest comeback in playoff history, final score 45 to 44. In 2014, three teams kicked off their year winning three straight. Nick Foles led the Eagles to a hot start before a Week 9 injury left Mark Sanchez at the helm. Powered by the Pro Bowl combo of LaShawn McCoy and Darren Sproles, the Eagles kept the ship afloat, but they'd narrowly miss out on the playoffs with a 10-6 record. Dalton's going to take his shot near side. It is caught. A.J. Green cutting back. And he's in! Wow! The Bengals rode the fourth-year duo of Andy Dalton and A.J. Green to three straight wins, but the offense regressed. Since he finished with a 10-5-1 record before losing in the wild card round, their seventh straight playoff loss under Marvin Lewis. The Cardinals also got off to a quick start, but their high expectations would be short-lived. Despite a defense led by Calais Campbell, Patrick Peterson, and Antonio Cromartie, Arizona couldn't muster enough offense without Carson Palmer. The veteran played just six games due to injury as his squad got bounced in the wild card round. Newton bends low, takes the snap, short drop, hits the quarterback draw. Oh! Oh! Silver shot for the touchdown! Oh my goodness, the legend just goes on! The 2015 Panthers had the looks of something special. Behind the superhuman play of Cam Newton, Carolina became just the fourth team ever to go 14-0 and the first NFC team to accomplish the feat. Cam's record-setting season helped produce the league's best scoring offense, and the MVP orchestrated some thrilling victories victories in the process. Newton steps up, throws for the end zone, Olsen, touchdown! Newton had some truly heroic performances, including five touchdown displays against Washington, New Orleans, and the Giants. Then there was the defense, led by the all-pro trio of Josh Norman, Luke Keekley, and Thomas Davis. They also came to play, surrendering the sixth fewest points in the league. But. Carolina finally had an off day in week 16, falling to a mediocre Falcon squad. Cam threw for just 142 yards and lost a fumble while the defense had no answers for Julio Jones. Ryan rolling, looking, just gonna throw it deep for Jones, double coverage, oh, what a catch! Touchdown! And Julio Jones up and over, posterizes Luke Keekley. what a play! The Panthers would rebound to win the NFC crown, but they couldn't seal the deal as Vaughn Miller and the Broncos dashed their Super Bowl dreams. Carolina became the fifth straight 15-win squad to miss out on a Lombardi trophy. Injuries derailed the Vikings season before it even began in 2016, but that didn't stop Mike Zimmer's team from rattling off five straight wins. Despite a preseason injury to quarterback Teddy Bridgewater and a week two injury to Adrian Peterson, Minnesota found early success behind Sam Bradford and a top 10 defense. Rogers throws and it's intercepted! It is picked up by Trey Waves! But despite a hot start, Minnesota imploded after their week six bye. An ugly turnover filled loss against the Eagles got the ball rolling and not in a good way. Bradford himself committed three turnovers and was sacked six times as the Vikings looked entirely out of sorts. It's intercepted in the end zone. They went on to win just three of their final 11 regular season games. Minnesota's five Pro Bowl defenders kept the games close, but the offense lacked consistency. They couldn't sustain drives or hold on to the ball, committing a turnover in each of their final eight games. The once perfect squad wouldn't even qualify for the postseason, finishing eight and eight. The Chiefs won the race for the unbeaten for a third time in 2017, 
Yeah, Patrick Mahomes was on the roster, but he wasn't playing. Instead, this squad was led by the Pro Bowl group of Alex Smith, Kareem Hunt, Travis Kelsey, and Tyree Kill. Smith winds up, goes deep downfield, and getting free is Tyree Kill to give Kansas City the lead. Even with Jamal Charles in the rearview mirror and Mahomes on the doorstep, KC had more than enough firepower. They started the season by dumping 42 points on the defending champs en route to a 5-0 start. Week 6 got off to a more inauspicious start. A wayward snap on the opening drive doomed the Chiefs from the outset. They'd go on to produce just 28 rushing yards and a loss to the Steelers. The offense continued to take a step back as KC lost six of seven games after the flawless start. At just six and six, Andy Reid's squad rallied to win four straight and salvage a division title. The Chiefs built an 18-point lead in the wild card round, but the Titans would roar all the way back. Mariota. Mariota to the line of scrimmage, maybe across the line. It's a flex back to him for a touchdown. Marcus Mariota and Derrick Henry punctuated another disappointing end to a promising Chiefs season. 2018 was the Rams' third season back in LA, and they rounded into form. The ferocious Aaron Donald led the league with 20 and a half sacks, earning his fourth straight All-Pro and second consecutive Defensive Player of the Year nod. But it was the offense that powered the herd. Goff looking left, throws, end zone, it's Todd Gurley! Goff hit him in stride! Jared Goff erupted for nearly 4,700 passing yards while All-Pro Todd Gurley rushed for 17 scores. At the midway mark, Sean McVay's squad was sitting atop the NFL, a perfect 8-0. In Week 9 against the Saints, Goff orchestrated an impressive 21-point comeback to tie the game early in the fourth. But it wasn't enough, as LA gave up almost 500 yards and 45 points to New Orleans. A couple weeks later, the Rams found themselves in another thriller. In their epic 54-51 win, McVeigh and company cemented themselves as a true offensive juggernaut. But those fireworks burned a little less bright come playoff time. Yes, the Rams got their revenge in New Orleans, but the league's second-ranked offense disappeared in Super Bowl 53, scoring just three points in an uninspiring loss. The 49ers entered the 2019 season with tempered expectations. Instead, they evolved into the most balanced attack in pro football. After finishing the previous season a putrid 4-12, Kyle Shanahan and company raced to an 8-0 start. Until their first loss in Week 10, they won each game by an average of nearly 17 points. Jimmy Garoppolo delivered his best season yet, while George Kittle led the team in receiving as an All-Pro. It is caught still on his feet as Kittle with a big play and the stiff arm. George Kittle, flag, flag, he's down to the 30. Add on Richard Sherman, Defensive Rookie of the Year Nick Bosa, and a career year from Raheem Mostert, and you got a winning formula. In Week 10, they overcame three turnovers and nearly completed a comeback against the Seahawks. A last-second field goal sent the game to overtime, but Seattle prevailed and handed the Niners their first loss. But they continued to chug along and finished the season 13-3 as the NFC's top seed. San Francisco boasted the second-ranked scoring offense and allowed the second-fewest yards in the league. A stout defense and a strong run game propelled them through the NFC as Mostert rumbled for four touchdowns in the conference championship game. Mostert, left side, another first down carry and more. How about a touchdown? The Niners were just a quarter away from a Super Bowl title before Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs stormed back in the final frame. In 2020, the Steelers didn't seem to notice the empty seats. They put on a truly unexpected display of dominance. Led by a 38-year-old Ben Roethlisberger and the third-ranked defense, Pittsburgh rattled off 11 straight wins to start the season. Out of the gun on third down, he's intercepted! And it's an open field straight ahead for the run back and the touchdown! 
all pro seasons from Minka Fitzpatrick and TJ Watt fueled the black and yellow as the defense led the league in sacks. Meanwhile, Big Ben meshed with a slew of young receivers. Juju Smith-Schuster, Deontay Johnson, and Chase Claypool all had at least 800 yards and seven scores, but this squad was still searching for their identity. In week 13, Pittsburgh jumped out to a two-touchdown halftime lead against Washington, but the offense would muster just 115 yards and three points in the second half as the Steelers were handed their first loss of the year. They went on to win just one more game in 2020, finishing 12 and four. Mike Tomlin's group couldn't right the ship against Cleveland as the Browns hung 48 points on their vaunted defense in a wild card loss. The Steelers season ends with a thud that after being 11 and 0, it really hurts. And finally, we've got the 2021 Cardinals. Behind the dynamic Kyler Murray and big names on both sides of the ball, Arizona looked like the NFL's best team through week seven. Outside of a nail biter against the Vikes, they weren't just winning either, they were winning big. They scored at least 30 points in six of their first seven games. New additions J.J. Watt and A.J. Green added firepower to an already formidable squad, and their impact was immediate. Murray has a moment here, and fires. Catch mid inside the five. A.J. Green with a cardinal touchdown. James Conner and Murray were both pro bowlers, as were defenders Chandler Jones and Buda Baker. Before you knew it, the Cards started 7-0 for the first time in 47 years, but a brutal Week 8 loss to Green Bay turned the tide. End zone and picked off! Intercepted by Rasul Douglas! And the Packers are going to win it! Injuries mounted, and after their perfect start, Arizona finished the season losing six of their final 10 tilts. They limped into the wild card round, where the eventual champion Rams put them away for good. Rams pressure is picked up. Tyler! Did he get rid of it? It's intercepted! Into the end zone! Once undefeated, the cards were completely outmatched. In 2022, Jalen Hurts and the Eagles are the last undefeated team standing, but will their bruising run game and opportunistic defense take them to the promised land? Time to sit back and wait and see.